Go ahead, Sharon. Are we doing poems to start with, Andrew? Uh, if, if sure, why not? And I think the recording just started, so all my preamble wasn't recorded for all time, unfortunately. But so so be it. <laughs> Go ahead, Sarah. Press for the wine. Welcome. Um, thank you all for joining us on this Saturday. Yes, as Indrin's already said, thanks for being with us virtually, even if it's nice weather where you are. Um, my name is Sarah Cahill Mary, and I'm the associate editor with Indrin of the Beltway. And it's wonderful to have all your poems blessing the magazine online. And I'm excited to hear you all read. Um, as was mentioned, several of our past issues have been elegiac in motif, maybe. Um, this one was purposeful. And I guess. Shall we start with a poem each? Sure, let's do that. That would be great. <clears throat> Here's an, an elegy um, that I wrote recently. There's no title yet other than uh, maybe miscarriage. I bled today too, pausing on railroad tracks, looking left and right, no lights flashed to warn me of barreling trains. Yet I looked for danger where there is none. Valet dented the car they cared for while father laid splayed, bare to precise cuts, relieving hemorrhoids, pressure from parts stretched the wrong way. Plastic topped health foods fail to flush toxins until a knife pulls out bloody clots like the baby beating for a moment inside of you. Dropped onto a pad, unceremonious endings, quivering over cellular waves, you ask, is this it? Far from white tiles, feet straddle the toilet bowl, clutching a lit phone, translucent white lights, heaving, get rid of it. And I'll pass the mic back to you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, just, uh, I'm going to read a poem. Uh, please keep yourselves on mute, uh, except when you're reading, just for, to avoid unnecessary sounds. And, um, and remember to unmute yourself when you're reading. I'm going to read now a short poem, a new one, um, which I translated into Spanish. It was published in Spanish uh, as Sacado de, de la Maleta. Here is the original English uh, version, which remains, which is unpublished, unpacked. And um, it's a sort of an elegy, I suppose, but a rather brutal one, unpacked. They stole a lot, minerals, jewels, silk, paintings, cotton, too much. They left sadness, sorrow, anger, and a railroad, a national economy, a language. They left blood, babies, variations on traditional stocks. They left this poem in the mind of a boy born just after they packed up, were packed off. It's unpacked for you. Thank you. And now I'm delighted to welcome uh, uh, we'll start with Alexis Levitin. He has translated three different poets in this issue. So let's start with him reading just the translations of Astrid Cabral. Go ahead, Alexis, just with Astrid for the moment. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm uh, very pleased to join all of you in this Zoom session. Astrid Cabral uh, was raised in Manaus on the Amazon River. And she is uh, one of the leading poets in Brazil and is considered an environmentalist as well. She is the person who translated Henry David Thoreau's Walden into Portuguese. Uh, her most recent book published a few months ago here in America is uh, Gazing Through Water, and it was published by Aliform Books. These are two very short poems. The first one is called Portrait, <clears throat> Retrato. Já viste pássaro ter raízes? Já viste árvore ter asas? Já viste peixe ter voz? Olha para mim. Portrait. Have you ever seen a bird with roots? Have you ever seen a tree with wings? Have you ever seen a fish with a voice? Look at me. This next poem is called Wind, <clears throat> Vento. Sou os autossuficientes, o anestesiados loucos, 
torçam a cara ao vento, rejeitando o beijo da brisa no rosto, o invisível abraço no corpo. Wind. Only the self-sufficient or anesthetized madmen twist their head away from the wind, rejecting the kiss of a breeze on the face and on the body its invisible embrace. Thank you. Excellent. Ótimo. Obrigado, Alexis. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, go ahead. Uh, unless we have any volunteers, we're just picking people cold. Um, Fran, would you like to read for us? Fran, I wasn't planning on it. I was here to listen. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Um, uh, that's okay. Uh, Fran is, will be in a future issue. Uh, welcome, Fran. Thanks for the listening. Uh, shall I? In, invite the next poet then, Sarah. Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay, let's try. Uh, uh, how about um, Andre Bagu? Andre, would you like to read now? Thank you. Hi, yeah, it would be a pleasure. Good afternoon, thank everyone. For, um, tuning in from sunny Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, and thank you so much, Indran and Sarah, for having me in this issue. Um, so uh, the two poems I'm going to read are in the current issue. And um, well, Trinidad is the land of carnival, <laughs> calypso and steel pan. Um, and my first poem is kind of inspired by the fact that this year for the first time in, yeah, in, in, in recent history, we had no carnival. Carnival mask. Upon your face, I find my meaning. Against the elements, your body, my standard. I am cut for you to breathe. My eyes, fearful symmetries, my paper skin, long hardened, forever bent to your imperfect form. The jaws of life, the spires of my horns are effortless and proud. Heavy as the crown, heavier when discarded, dumped in dust, lost among the used up cinders, my beaten shape of ash. Yet next year, you will see, you cannot leave me. Like a man scorned, I bide my time. For the mask is really all you fear. The mask is what? you do not wear. So recently I was reading um, a newspaper article about Pablo Escobar. Pablo Escobar, um, among <laughs> many other things, um, had a private zoo. And after he was hunted down and killed, um, he left behind this, this zoo, which had these hippos in them. And they eventually went feral to the extent that now they have reproduced so quickly, so rapidly that Colombia has a real problem and they have to actually consider culling um, the hippos uh, because of their threat to the environment. Um, this poem is written after I read that. Pablo Escobar's Hippos. After the raid, they found them in the hacienda. Four big, bare ungulates, even-toed, porpoise-like, worthy cousins to whales, each a quatrain of wallowing. They slipped away, lost to cathedrals of night. They re-emerged, sometime later dozens of them, volcanic islands being born. Basalt flecks on the water at Magdalena, steamy and slick and legion. A feral species culls what it finds. 
a feral plant becomes a noxious crop. Pablo Escobar, they say, has come back and the world is one long murder. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent point. Sarah, all yours. Let's hear next from Pat Cabra. Thank you for inviting me today. I'm really pleased to be amongst so many illustrious poets. And I, I read this copy of The Beltway with great interest. Uh, the two poems that I am going to read, one was published, one is not in this issue and has not been published. But I felt that this has been such a year of mourning and of rage as well over the last couple of years that they both fit together really well. And so after talking with Indran, I've decided to uh, read two poems. Uh, the first one is in the publication. It's titled Floyd. Afterwards, when the dawn breaks, the fox takes its silent tail into the dense shadows and dogs bark in the vestige of a heavy night. There is a claustrophobic premonition that rises with the morning mist, car exhaust, that the last touch of darkness will be imprinted in the morning coffee, reported in the morning paper, flash across the screen over scrambled eggs and toast, perhaps grapefruit, and carry still the cold anger and rage that this gut-wrenching atrocity will not be the last. The second poem I'm reading uh, comes from both my experience working for many years uh, in the diplomatic corps and uh, the current pandemic that we're facing. It's titled, A Multiplicity of Holes. Yesterday was the sun, today the rain, and tomorrow? And I, I dig holes, photo attached below. Dirt freshly turned over, ready to plant or bury after years of the body count at my morning embassy press brief. Now, the media saga of paramedics, nurses, doctors, statisticians, keeping a virus body count overwhelmed. Continuing through it all, grieving the dead, injured, imprisoned, tortured, numbers to us, to others, their world. The second Intifada, Operation Iraqi Freedom, the Egyptian Arab Spring, eight years I watched and we counted. After a while, you lose track of the numbers, bombings, explosions, attacks, clashes, detentions, tanks, Young soldiers met over drinks. All those years, you step back, package it up, continue on. And so I dig holes, searching for hope, railing against needless loss, tossing the garden, dirt to plant anew. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. Devastating. Um, now I would like to ahora me gustaría presentar un gran poeta de Argentina, a great poet from Argentina. Her name is Ana Quijo, and she will read uh, two poems in Spanish, one of which appeared in the issue and with my translation. So we'll read that together. Um, adelante, Ana. Go ahead, Ana. Did we lose Anna? I see her, but she's not, um, we've lost her picture. I'll tell you what, let's move on and we'll come back with Anna in, uh, in a little while. Um, uh, Jiwon, would you like to read uh, for us now? Jiwon Choi from New York. Hi, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, Thank you for um, inviting me and putting this 
reading together. I'm going to read two new poems just so I can get used to uh, reading them to other people um, versus just to myself. Uh, the first poem is called Sunny Stitt Plays Bird. And sometimes the audio is a little bit off on my end, so just uh, apologies in advance. Sunny Stitt Plays Bird. Sunny Stitt plays, now's the time, and you believe you can fly. Believe you have discovered the magic flute to propel you, cut through the tightened seal of time and space. You can transverse the complications of your diminution here. What your imagination will not allow, your body memory will take hold so that you may realize that you were of wings after all. Riding the north wind across these hemispheres, making the seasons, Guadalajara, Lima, Saginaw, Detroit. Come embody light. And the second one, um, gone through a couple of uh, versions um, is called Beautiful Mutant. In Rochester of 1992, after a dinner of spaghetti in red sauce, we went to a bar where I became a pygmy, sorry, where I became a pygmy under glass, where I was made to Ota Benga myself into a beautiful mutant. No rope was thrown to capture me. I was simply surrounded by men who frequent bars in gangs, in groups, in mobs to make a point about ownership. Alas, to be a beautiful mutant in America among the wilted people stuck in their time, like that girl in Little Rock, whose face is frozen in forever, but still twitching hate. Her digitized face will outlast the pharaohs. Not even time can erase those rage lines or close the angry gash that is her mouth. Who led her down this pansy path of entitlement in an incidental town where she thought and was taught to gloat about birthright and where no one told her that separate water fountains was a dick move. Like being in this tattered town that serves the weakest sauce, this side of the Mason Dixon, you'd think it was pink. Thank you, Juwan, thank you. Um, we're going to go back and forth, the chair and I introducing, but because I had already introduced Anna, let me now go to Anna. Anna is now connected. Bienvenido, Anna Gisho de Buenos Aires. Um, so Anna uh, will read two poems and then I will read one of them in the version in English. Adelante, Anna. Bueno, buenos días. Disculpen las idas y venidas, pero no sé por qué no pude entrar por... Eh, la computadora, estoy en el teléfono y mi riesgo es quedarme sin datos, así que igual voy a escucharlos todo lo posible. ¿Querés traducir, Indram, o, o leo directamente? Uh, she was just apologizing and she's now on her phone and she may be out of time on her phone, so she's going to read right away. Go ahead, adelante. Bueno, muchísimas gracias, Indram, y qué lindo compartir esto con todos. Eh, voy a leer el poema que Indram después va a traducir de mi libro La Orilla Familiar, donde hay un coro de mujeres que cantan Mujer Uno. Ah, ¿se podía elegir? Pregunta. Ahora que ya es vieja, ahora que su vestido es negro, aceitoso, que ha parido seis hijos y tiene el vientre entumecido, el lacio, el peinado tirante 
y esa sonrisa tiesa y finita? ¡Ah! ¿Se podía gozar? ¿Era posible entonces dejarse tocar en la entrepierna sin que los padres miren? ¿Era posible cantar con voz profunda como Chabela Vargas, no como Doris Day, el pasito liviano y ese final feliz y tan yanqui? ¿Era posible cantar un bolero como si entrecerrara los ojos para él, la nuca para él, los pechos como frutas abiertas y ese olor a verano y las enaguas flotando el precipicio, la clara manera de decir que sí? ¡Ah! ¿Se podía reír y no planchar el ceño almidonado para que no se enojaran en casa? Como si fuera la calle la apertura, la noche la apertura, un corredor erógeno, un relámpago en la columna vertebral. ¡Ah! ¿No estaba mal tentarse con la risa de otro, con el olor de otro? con la cintura de ese hombre perfumado que traía jazmines los domingos, elegir qué inglés, qué palabras, qué portazos pegar cuando le pegan a ella las palabras dolidas, las palabras precarias, amarretas. Haber parido hijos y no haberle escuchado ni un te amo. Nunca la caricia después de la descarga Nunca una manera de mirar diferente antes del desayuno. ¡Ah! El frío la acobarda. Es hora de cerrar esa puerta que viene haciendo ruido. Es hora de prender el farol y apenas descansar. Muchas gracias. Many thanks, uh, Anna. Woman one. Ah, can I choose? She asks now that she is old, that her dress is black oily, that she has borne six children, her womb swollen, flaccid, hair disheveled, and that weak and finite smile. Ah, can I enjoy? It was possible then to allow touching of the inner thigh without parents watching. It was possible to sing with a deep voice like Chavela Vargas, not like Doris Day, the light man manger, that happy ending so Yankee. It was possible to sing a bolero as if one can half close one's eyes for, for him, neck for him, breasts like open fruits and that summer smell petticoats floating to the precipice, the clear way of saying yes. Ah, one could smile and no iron, the cotton wool eyebrow, so no one could would get angry at home, as if it was the street, the opening, the night, the opening, an erogenous corridor lighting in the vertebral column. Ah, wasn't bad to tempt for yourself with the smile of another with the smell of another, with the waste of that perfumed man who brought jasmine flowers on Sundays, to elect which groins, which words, which door slams, to stick when the hurtful words stick to her, precarious words, penny-pinching words, to have borne sons and not having heard, not even one, I love you, never the caress after the discharge, never a way of looking differently before breakfast, Ah, the cold that makes you a coward, the hour to close that door, making noise for some time, the hour to light the lamp, and only now, rest. Muchas gracias, Sindram. Qué lindo escucharlo este, en tu voz, como nos pasó una vez en un encuentro, que también me tradujiste. Y yo ahora tengo, no sé si todos entienden español, contame vos. Sí, por favor, adelante. We'll hear now one more poem, just, just in the Spanish original. Thank you. Claro, yes. pero ¿entienden español? Porque si algunos no... Algunos sí, algunos no. Pero adelante, por favor. Bueno, si no, usa uno más corto para no atormentarlos bueno. mucho. Bueno, ¿Cómo, bueno ¿cómo voy por... Eh, desde Troya. El campo de batalla es un guiso. Cada hombre una lenteja, un poroto. El caldo es la muerte y está ardiendo. 
se queman los becerros en sacrificios, expele el humo su relente, quema la noche en el altar, huele a hueso calcinado, a intestinos disueltos. Se queman los becerros, pero Apolo no deja de temblar. Oh, Apolo oh. es un dios misericordioso, dicen los guisantes, los guisados. Es Ares el que impulsa, repiten. El guiso está espeso. El campo es una sucesión de hombres, de almitas, en pena. No hay espacio para la conmiseración. Las guerras se escriben con los vientres y son siempre una versión apócrifa. Ni Helena, ni París, ni Taltibio. El tema es el tesoro, el hambre por el tesoro. Los hombres, los buitres, perdón, se lo quedan finalmente carne de la carne de la carne, y es la plebe la que escurre sus plegarias pidiéndole al Dios para que todo pase lo más pronto posible. Para volver a casa, a los hilos nocturnos de la amada, al licor inicial, al hijito que extraña, que se extraña y que está lejos. Se regocijan las fauces de los buitres, el tesoro va pasando de manos y en el medio los hombres un banquete a deglutir. La casa está lejos para los que conduce Agamenón. Los troyanos defienden sus murallas. El caballo no relincha aún. Está sin madera, sin cauce, antes de que la noche caiga. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to be um, in, in this place. Um, thank you. Thank you, Indra. I love you. <laughs> I too, and I to, and I to you. Okay, wonderful. Um, and now um, uh, let's actually, uh, Don. We have a poets in the issue who are not uh, with us today. Here is one uh, with one of his poems, Baron Wormser. Go ahead. Selfie. After taking a picture of herself nude, standing up to send to her boyfriend, she started crying, pleasure and pride dissolving in the instant glow, the pang of me, not me, exploding, grief for what lay inside, unphotographed, yet leading its own stark life that wanted to be seen, her soul sense, but never would or could. Her revealed beauty blocking a deep, unuttered magnificence. Perhaps what he adored even more than the breast and batch of hair and winsome 16 year old smile, all that stood within her given name and that a year later would entice random world wide web comers. This body blazing forth the call of one love, the many betrayals. Thank you. That was uh, Baron Wormser. All of the poems of Barons in the issue are recorded and on the Poetry Channel, so you can see them there. That was just a little sampler. Baron was unable to be with us, so he, he we're showing him virtually, virtual upon virtual. This is a, um, where we are now in the virtual world. Sarah, go ahead. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, I'd like to hear from Olga next. Olga, will you step up to the mic virtually? Yes, thank you so much, Sarah. Um, I'm so happy to be here. The elegiac mood is, <laughs> for better or for worse, my kind of mood as a poet and translator. And, um, you know, too much of a good thing, I think, we've <laughs> had after the Trump administration for four years here, which was a little bit of a communal experience. I find it a little jarring to be in the pandemic and so isolated. Um, so at the end of the day, I often find myself sort of groping for poetic or musical comfort. And what I've been turning to by way of sort of elegiac comfort is um, Albinoni, 
adagio in G minor. And sometimes I also sort of watch in my head um, the film Manchester by the Sea. If you've seen it, there is a famous scene where folks um, are looking at a house that has burned down and walking in that and sort of absorbing that reality. Not to scare you, my poetry will not be about that, but it's just a powerful imagination of, of a time that we're living in and that that too is real and present and how do we shape that. The poet I'm going to read is named Vladimir Gundersman. Apologies to Alexis and anyone else who already heard him last night at Alta. Um, and um, I wanted to thank um, the editors of Beltway Poetry Review for including this poem and translation in the current issue um, and my poem as well. Gundersman was born in 1948 in what was back then um, Leningrad, USSR. He came to this country the United States in 1990, and he now remains here. Sometimes he also lives in St. Petersburg. Um, he came of age in the nonconformist um, uh, underground poetry milieu in Leningrad, and he still has that negativism that resonates with elegies. The poem that I'm going to read, first in the original, is about sort of thinking about our own eventual end and kind of living with that awareness um, and still walking and talking, but yet thinking, you know, how precarious things are um, and sort of thinking of how, how do we, with what emotion do we live in that, um, knowing how fragile things are. Еще хожу и говорю, на голос отвечает голос. Из электрички тонкую зарю, вот эту я увижу ли еще раз? Какую глупость совершить могу? Так втрогаться в стеклянно-пыльный пейзаж, Что говорить я избегу тоски грядущей, непосильной, И не завидую нелюбящему жизнь. Но я уже не верю словам, которые произнеснись. Мы жаркие, вседышащие звери, И ничего не избежим. Тем ненасытней потрясение, Когда в вагоне в тридцать тел дрожим И дышим сумерками в воскресенье. I'm still alive. I walk and talk. My voice speaks up and voices answer. Despite it all, the question, The sunset on my train ride home. That skinny line, the one right there. Who says I'll live to see another? To get absorbed, caught up in this dusty train window pane landscape that I could say, I love all this so much that I'll be spared regrets when I am old. As difficult as it will be, I do not envy those who forgot how to love life. What silliness though. At this point, I do not trust words spoken. We're animals, all of us hot-blooded, breathing all the things around us, omni-breathing, and can't escape. It's all the more astonishing when we all tremble in the train car, 30 bodies as one, and breathe this Sunday's twilight. I really love how that poem gets us all of a sudden out of an elegy into the light. And I'm gonna continue with um, a kind of light, my own, <laughs> a poem called Raspberry Lockdown. Spoiler alert, I really love plants. <laughs> Raspberry Lockdown. In the heart of a crisis, in the backyard of a bad virus, our raspberry plants moonlight as geishas. <laughs> oh, sweet nipples, soft in June's hand. Oh, half spheres, raspberry towers. Oh, burgundy brambles, taut as lute strings. Won't you come take a look, sweetheart, away from your makeshift and frenzied desk? Have some berries, my love. Have an innocent little threesome. You, me, and the idea of eternal youth. <laughs> In the before times, what did we do for exiting, for existing? Lectures, maybe. Job talks and workshops, seminars and more job talks, more talk, fewer jobs. The fight to make it, 
the flight from jobs that refused to marry us and from friends who did not refuse. Have some berries, my love. We could not outrun the world. Migration did not prevent pain. This pandemic tells us vulnerability is packed in the body. The plants could not leave. What to learn from them? Tan, rooted, taller than us, they sway in the warm wind. Each berry a small surrender. Oh, delight, deep fight, deep flight, come fly with me. Eat at long lost. Be my living animal, gorging on seeds. Thank you. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> gorging and gorgeous, both. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I'm, I'm going to pass the mic to Sarah. Just, um, I know where Patricia's having some video trouble, so we'll, if, Patricia, you won't be next, but we'll, uh, we'll fix that and then come back to you. Go ahead, Sarah. Uh, okay. Is she is she gone? I can't see. No, me. she's she's not on visually yet. So oh. perhaps you can go to the, another point. Oh, she's just coming on. I can oh. see now. All right. So, well, uh, Zilka, do you want to go ahead and and go for the moment if you're ready? Wonderful. Absolutely, I'm ready. This is just wonderful. It just makes me feel so connected and happy and. Um, just part of a family, you know, been feeling like an orphan most of the time. So this is just wonderful. Okay, uh, I have two poems to read. Uh, the first one is a little long, the other one not so much. And I just wanted to introduce to you my brand new book in our beautiful bones, which I am uh, celebrating right now. And I'm so happy that two of the poems in this book are the ones uh, that Indran and Sarah chose for this issue. So just a very quick note on the first poem, which is called A to Z of Foreign Anguish. And uh, it's what's called an abecedarian where the entire letter of the alphabet begins each uh, word on the left side, the beginning side, but I've done a little more tricky version by creating it into what's called a double abecedarian where I've done that along the margin on this side. So it's a little difficult to tell if you don't have the poem in front of you, but because I'll read it differently. And I want to also pay tribute to uh, a poem, a, a, a wonderful po poem, poet, um, and it's the poem is called Discourse on the Logic of Language. Some of you may already know this poet's work, uh, Canadian Caribbean poet, M. Norsebe Philip. A is for anguish, says my mummy tongue, my lingo, la la. But English is my foreign father tongue, daddy lang, blab, blab, blab. Colonists with your white gaze told our stories with classic demagoguery, tyranny, manifest destiny, excuses. You forged evil tales to transform us into demons, crushed truths with vile, flippant lies. What about us? How you ravaged us? Scepter and staff grind down our culture. Kings of erosion and erasure. How long? Has your terror ruled? Your knives at our children's throats? Who wash Indians out of every picture? Who conquered our lands crying, I just come in peace? Guns in your hearts, greed in your DNA. The Raj kept us slaves in our own land, took our tea, spices, jewels, broke our back, lashed and tortured us, What's in your crown? Our Kohinoor. O oh, cruel masters, recorders of the inferior race. Ah, clever Sahib and Mem, natives, like insects you labeled us, with fine calipers, condescension. Oppressor, the nightmare still lives, the hate systems that never go. Pain is embedded in our bones. You poisoned our wells. Now you dump questions on us. You teach us civility. Listen to our Q&A. 
our ANQ right out of our mouths. You shoved the father tongue down our savage and shithole countries' throats, destroyed histories, literatures, tongues, made us ugly in our own eyes, made us hate ourselves, split us, shattered us, turned Hindu against Muslim, Muslim against Hindu, viceroys and priests. You rule, you hunger converted us. Oh, holy reverend white man, was sweet Jesus's face fair? He was a humble dark-skinned Jew. Xanax, will it help? When we invite you to our open table, you vex yourself. You cry, wear your current foreign anguish that we can sway zeitgeist, world biz, karma. Got heart, got English, chutzpah, bizaz. And so I end on the Z there. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, and that's my rant for this morning. Uh, the other one is called Freedom Song with Ginsburg, Dylan, and Marley, and I'll read very quickly. So there are song lyrics uh, in this poem that you will probably recognize as well as lines from poems. It occurs to me that I am America. Ginsburg, can you rant to us? Dylan, can you moan to us? Marley, can you wail to us? America, you are beautiful. Sometimes you have the biggest heart I know. Sometimes you have the smallest heart I know. But please get out of the way if you can't lend a hand for the times they are changing. Oh, prophets of the people, will the walls keep marching on? Are we disposable animals? Come, you masters of war that build all the guns. It's your children you riddle with bullets, fling upon the rubbish heap of history. I say nothing about my prisons nor the millions of underprivileged who live in my flower pots under the light of 500 suns. The giants of the castle have no mercy. They grind our bones to make their bread, eat our little children, fee, fi, fo, fum. Oh, prophets and militias of Mammon and Machiavelli and Monsanto, even Jesus would never forgive what you do. Oh, let us sing our true, true songs, our songs of freedom. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. Oh, emancipate yourself, emancipate yourself. None but ourselves can free our minds. Thank you so much. Thanks, Indra and Sarah. Thanks, all of you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ilke. Obviously, we have no political preferences in Beltway, so we, we hear <laughs> poems. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Uh, wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, now let's, uh, uh, let's hear from um, uh, Patricia. Patricia, are you able to read now? Patricia Spears-Jones. You'll have to unmute, please. Great. Yeah, I can read. I just, have, I just haven't been able to see any of the other readers, uh, but I've been hearing everybody and you're all totally terrific. And, uh, and it was wonderful to hear the poet from Argentina. And uh, I've known Andrew in a thousand years, uh, <laughs> for real. Uh, and uh, so this is fun. Uh, I'm going to read a couple of, uh, I'm going to read the poem that's in this issue, uh, which is dedicated to Robert Hershon, who <clears throat> died this past spring. And uh, I also am going to read a poem dedicated to Clara Bell Alegria, who passed away in 2018. And then I'm going to shift because I can't live in elegy. Uh, and I don't think anybody should. So here goes. Uh, hold on a second, and I'll first read the poem on the death of Clarabel Alegria. And I just want to say that part of the, <clears throat> there's a shift uh, in the poem because when I wrote this poem, I was in um, Captiva, Florida, 
Florida at the Rauschenberg residency. And you can see the stars. I mean, you can literally see all the stars. And so Orion is in this poem, Orion's belt. On the death of Claribel Alegria, 1924-2018. On earth, she marked her days with rage and love, who fought the generals and their army of thieves and torturers. Her pen was mighty, so also their arms. Death is the shadow twin, the one remaining in the foothills by the back door in a convent off a mountainside. And yet a mother's breast awaits her infant's mouth. A rooster crows and children gather what food there is, while bells ring across the foothills when the soldiers leave. A music of hope, even as another child is buried and a landmine erupts a few kilometers from hospital. We live in a time of suffering in places of beauty, where the water and air meet in mountains dark soiled. Food grows so effortlessly and so does greed. We live in a time of suffering in places of beauty, where yesterday's rebel is today's president and greed cowers the hurt children who hunger not only for their mother's milk, but a safe place where peace storms the land with smiles and the tender removal of all aspects of war. A phantasm of peace, a peace unlike the other ones, negotiated and then neglected, thus military rifles, handguns, machetes, bowie knives, unexploded landmines, all made so that peace will end and terror return. What you hear is the sea. The heavy waves come in, go out. Stars pattern. Orion's belt, or is that his heel? And then another woman of letters departs. Will she step on Orion's heel? Would she say, excuse me, I did not see your heel. Would she try to hide her error as her celestial garments drag across the night sky? What if Orion could speak? And if he did, would he say, all the poets love my heel or my belt? You're not the first to seek an anchor year. March 21, 2021. And this is also dedicated to several other poets who passed away this year. Lewis Warsh, Gary Linhart. Uh, there's just a whole list. It's kind of daunting. March 21, 2021. You see the moon rise, the sky is pearled blue, and you remember it is Pedro Pietre's birthday and J.S. Bach. Both played their organs with intentional glamour, as if there was no one else who could walk a poem or offer up that rumbling sacred welcome, the melodies soar and drop, drop and soar. Like the moon's sliced face, the wind has turned and tuned its brazen soundings. Then the Mr. Softy truck tinkles that terrible jingle. Oh, spring chilly tenderness. The march of lions and lambs, a march of missteps and dreaming. Lenten sacrifices small, no candy, no pastry, a large, no false speaking, learning to forgive. What an aching sorrow hovers the city. Old men and women shuffle to the corner and back, their spines cascading as names are flung 
into Orion's belt. Poets' names, Robert, Adam, another we have not heard. And um, we need joy. We need to always be reminded about what is lost when we think about elegies. And some of it is just pleasure. Mermaid Parade poem, June 21, 2014. Emancipate your mind. I love that line. Emancipate our hearts. Let us think about pleasure. Mermaid Parade poem, June 21, 2014. Three goddesses on the F train wear red lipstick and carry cell phones. They have bestowed their boons on those who smiled and waved at them. They smiled and waved back, and then they had to get on the F train to return to their temples in Carroll Gardens. The red lobster goddess has a slight accent, Slavic. She speaks about a man, not a boyfriend. No, he was my lover. Her body shimmers in the coolness of the F train. Goddess with flowers in her hair smiles BF typically as if she knows more than she is willing to say. The crowned goddess places her green cloud studded with gold sea creatures in front of her, leaving her head bare. A loss of power, except a gold scorpion barrette holds her hair, smart girl. Goddesses are a dime a dozen in New York City, maybe a quarter a dozen in Brooklyn, where they cast their favors with gusto. Oh, goddesses who have walked the stairs from the Stillwell side, you are now still and well. Here they are texting on the F train. A scented bath awaits each of them. Almond and honey or lavender. Drinks later when the moon hovers and the day slowly leaves the bright sunniness to memory and Instagram. Please, please, please remember the great pleasures of our life as we honor those who have gone before. Bravo! Bravo, Patricia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, great to have you in the issue. In Brooklyn. That was, I love that line. <laughs> I'm glad to be in the issue with you. Thank and I hope I get to see people when I, whenever this is recorded, so I'll know what everybody looks like. <laughs> it's so weird. It's just so weird. You will. We can see you though, and we and will be. Sh I'm sure you will be able to. Um, Sarah, go ahead. Um, next, we'd like to invite Elizabeth, if you're ready, to read for us. Elizabeth Bernazzi. Yes, I'm here. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, you're I'm afraid. I'm afraid my lighting is not very good today. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm actually. I mean, if you can see me or not, I can see all of you very well. You're, you're uh, sighted I'm, to I'm, the I'm, side of the screen. Are you able to move your camera so you'll be more in the center of the image? Thanks. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. good. That's I'm, better. I'm, I'm actually in New Mexico, uh, where the light is absolutely stunning this morning. <laughs> um, I seem to be in a kind of penumbra, of a poetic penum penumbra, if you, if you like. Uh, hello to everyone. And I want to second uh, actually what uh, Zilka said, um, that this gathering very movingly uh, does seem like uh, orphans coming home. I, 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 I love that. I love that sense. And uh, uh, the sense of what we have all been confronting over these last months um, I also want to second what Patricia just said about elegy, uh, that we cannot live there all the time. And yet, I think of Whitman, I, I saw this really marvelous uh, documentary recently about Whitman. I don't know whether everybody saw that or not. Um, but this, the way he captured uh, the sense of the reaching across that border uh, to the lively dead, uh, the, the, uh, the way we still talk uh, to our dead and what they mean to us, that seems to me an extraordinarily important aspect of what we're calling uh, elegy. 
uh, and the world that it has for all of us. Uh, and that there can be joy and celebration even in the way we celebrate our losses. So um, just a, a small uh, comment about the two poems that I'm going to read. Uh, my work comes uh, very strongly from um, a zone, a border, I think between waking and sleep. Um, I think of migration also uh, between consciousness and other states of uh, dream states uh, that in, in which we live. And uh, my work is also, I think it's not as uh, immediately referential uh, in certain ways as other styles of poetry, but it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, a zone that I, I know that I, I do inhabit with my work. Um, I'm going to read two poems. Um, they are quite related to dream work. And uh, I hope this one is sort of fun. It's called Steeplechase. Young Buddha escaping the sleeping castle. Your beautiful young wife, your infant son, your horse's hooves velveted, silent over the pavement stones, the cosmos conspiring in your mission. You ascend on your white mount, charging over rooftops in steeple tops. Young Shaga loved his wife to tears, his horse still white riding over Russian rooftops after her death. In Paris, he painted her white against the still cobalt sky. The hearts and flowers he offers her still red as ever. And his cow who keeps jumping over the moon. I'm the dish round a silver full moon running hand in hand with my spoon big as a house. And you're the cow jumping over me again. And from the ground, the big brown dog and the little black white dog are still laughing their heads off as we take off into the sky. Just ahead in the near distance, three white dwarf girls with monkey faces bound together like a packet of cigars float in the ether. And what are they telling us not to hear, to see, to speak of? Hold on to my hand, Mooney Spoon. <laughs> that steeplechase. Thank you, merci, gracias. Uh, and this is The Patience of Dogs. Um, I read it, I will read it uh, without comment. Um, and it is uh, subtitled Mexico, March uh, 2018. They arrive at dawn, the fluting silvered cries of small black birds, like thousands of sparks, droplets of sound falling like diamonds from the vines carpeting the walls of the courtyard. Painted ochre and oxblood red, they arrive at dawn. The long howls of the street dogs, lying on the pavement of the central plaza near the cathedral. Greetings to the sunrise, announcements of the end of the wake in darkness for the longed for return of light and leavings of food. They arrive at dawn the sounding of the great iron bells tolling in the belfry of the Rose Cathedral. Inform a wedding cake, marriage of night with day, of darkness with light, weaving of sounds gradually fading out, the momentary vibrations felt inside the body, dissipating, extinguishing with the full opening of day. They accompany the flight of my dreams, repeated scenes when I continue to look for a friend of long date, a beloved comrade, an exile like myself, who left Argentina long ago, finally came to France, to Paris, where I met him, and I am still looking for him in the streets of Paris, the appointed place for our next meeting, the point of our next encounter, and I see him driving a passing car along a great boulevard, and he is looking for me, 
he's looking for the point of our next encounter. And I see him looking, searching for me, but he does not see me. And I start to run. I try to call to him to attract his attention and I run faster and faster, but he always passes by looking for me, but he never sees me. And I cry out the silent dream, the silent cry heard in dreams forever unheard, which is silence itself. I continue to run along the same boulevard when I'm looking for my daughter, the point of meeting where I've invited her to come to find me where she seems to appear just in front of me here, there, and time. She appears at a different age. As a small child, an adolescent, a woman in the middle age with two sons. But the reunion is always postponed, put off for another point in time that never arrives. But I am always running to this meeting, looking for her, waiting for her, as if the meeting were always about to take place somewhere at some moment. Suddenly I see my own car and it, it comes to me, I have returned. I've come back to the point of my departure where my great red setter is still waiting for me beside the car. And I am frightened that I have left her there alone in the street by the car without a leash waiting for me since when, since forever. And what would happen to her if I could not get back and find her there in time? If she were left abandoned just by ill luck, if something happened to me, an accident, if I could not get back to find her, if the wait became too long, but she is still there waiting for me always, forever, we still have a chance. They arrive with the morning, the cries of hundreds of small birds whose fluting silvery calls come to us from the vines, carpeting the courtyard walls painted ochre and oxblood red. The long howls of the street dogs lying on the plaza near the cathedral, greeting the return of the sun, the light, the leavings of food, one more day, and still the tolling of bells, inviting us to rise, to come and share in this day, the mass of day among the souls in the ancient city. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Uh, just to note, Elizabeth is also editing an anthology of, an, a, a landmark anthology of Haitian poetry. Uh, yes, and thank you for mentioning it, and John, uh, very quickly. Uh, we're making an announcement actually just today as we speak. Okay. Um, it, it's, uh, it will be published by Trilingual Press uh, in Cambridge, Mass. in uh, 2022. Uh, it's... Uh, we have 37 uh, contributing poets from four different regions okay. and four different countries. Uh, and um, you will hear more about it very shortly. It's been um, one of the most inspiriting projects of my life for the last three years, in wonderful. which you have indeed been uh, a wonderful uh, supporter and contributor. So thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Good work, great work. Now, I would like to introduce, uh, she's a, well, a wonderful poet, She's also a, a publisher and, and a real, um, you know, a sort of resource for poetry in South America and, and throughout really the, the world. Her name is Glad Mendia, Gladys Mendia. She is from Venezuela, but has been living for a number of years in Chile. And uh, I had the pleasure of translating a few of her recent poems and um, so we will read it in a sort of dialogue back and forth, entre cortado, no? El poema, una estrofa en español y una estrofa en inglés, a passage in, English, in Spanish and a passage in English. Adelante, Gladys. Gladys? Sorry. Hello, John. Okay. Oh, muy buenas tardes. Eh, eh, estoy muy agradecida a Indram, a Sara, por la invitación a participar de la edición de, de esta revista de Bellway, estar junto a ustedes esta tarde. Y les voy a leer eh, los poemas que Indram eligió y tradujo al inglés de este libro que se llama Telemática, Reflexiones de una Dicta Digital. 
Entonces voy a leer un poema, son breves, un poema y Indran entonces lee la versión al inglés. Teleexistir o no teleexistir, he ahí la cuestión. To teleexist or not, that is the question. Madre Internet, sálvanos de las huellas, borra todo vestigio, danos el descanso del olvido, elimina nuestro Facebook para siempre. Mother Internet, save us from the footprints, wipe away all vestiges, give us the peace of forgetting, eliminate our Facebook forever. Vivir en las ondas, esparcida en la brillante pantalla del computador, náufraga del reino de las redes asociales. To live in the waves spread out on the brilliant computer screen. The kingdom of the ace social networks sinks. Amo todo lo que va a morir. Me fascino en lo precario de mi estadía, en mi paso superfluo por la tierra, en el paraíso artificial de mi memoria USB. I love everything that is going to die. I'm fascinated by the precarious state of my superfluous passage on earth the artificial paradise of my USB memory stick. Gracias. Gracias, Gladys. And uh, so make sure you, you contact her if you're going down south. Um, thank you. Gracias. Sarah? Uh, you're on mute, Sarah. Sorry. All right. Sarah is on mute. Um, Sorry. Oh, That's okay. I lost my mouse. Um, I have, who, who do we have still? Well, we have a second round of Alex's, if you'd like. If you'd like. <laughs> second dose. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the list here and I don't see. I suppose we could have an open mic thing, right? But Alexis, let's hear from you again. <laughs> well, I had three. Um, I am only one person, but <laughs> but as a translator, I represent three different people in that issue. Uh, and I kept the poems really short. So uh, this next uh, poet is Rui Bello, who normally writes very long poems. Uh, a man torn between uh, extreme passion for God and for this earth. Uh, this poem is uh, a simple, simple poem called Inverno e Verón. For you who know Spanish or Portuguese, you see that it's, uh, he said, winter and summer. But because the poem is fully rhymed, every single line rhyming in the, on the same uh, rhyme sound in the original, in order to achieve that, I had to change it. So you'll have to forgive me. I'm calling it summer and fall instead of summer and winter. Inverno e verão, tu trazes até mim a tua longa mão, estende-le como um ponte entre dois, entre nós dois, inverno e verão. Garantes que ela tem por trás o coração e no entanto só te chama irmão. Cada um de nós é como antes uma solidão e nada significa a nossa saudação. Summer and fall. Your long hand reaches toward me like a call. A bridge between us. Summer and late chill fall. You guarantee there lies behind the other. Another heart. And so I call you brother. Yet each of us remains alone behind a wall. And our greeting means nothing at all. Uh, and the other poem, <laughs> thank you. The other poem I will read only in English to save time. It's called The True Season. It is summer. I go along the road to Sintra, in fact, not so mysterious in the light of day, at the wheel of a car that is not a Chevrolet, and only at that point is prophecy lost. There is no moonlight, nor am I a pallid poet, 
pretending to pretend his deepest feelings. A rain is raining that leaves my eyes wet and brings me to feel a longing for winter. The light, the smell, the intimacy, the fire, how I wish it were winter. Maybe there the sun is out and I feel a painful yearning for summer. A season in another is the true season. Thank you, Alexis. We will come back to you. We're now going to hear from um, Peter Robinson, who couldn't be with us, but he recorded a poem for us. Uh, he's from the issue. Go ahead. Uh, I lived for um, 18 years in Japan uh, when my children were, were young and we would uh, travel back to Italy to, to visit my wife's family during the summer. So there was a great deal of coming and going from this part of Parma that I'm uh, so fond of. And um, this last poem from the group called Perpetual Elsewhere is about the feeling that would, that would come over me as we would need to be thinking again about going back to Japan for the uh, next semester. Uh, Perpetual Elsewhere. Yet darkening, closing with shorter words at kiosk, bar, dry cleaning outlet, routine's features can't but tell how our faces will not fit and the sense I shouldn't be here have overstayed the season's welcome. Litter's chestnut boulevards, their diseased leaves bidding us farewell. Forgive me, forgive me my dismay if I don't have a good word for them, if I seem to have fallen out of love with leaf-strewn avenues after rain, Arcadian temple and football team. These are the terms of disengagement given a broadest hint from autumn. And besides, it's time we went. Thank you, I was, yeah. The, for, the leaving, the falling leaves of autumn, it's a good point, but we have one more poet to hear from, which is the third translation from <laughs> Alexis. Um, and so Alexis, take us out, and then if we have time for a few minutes of chat, let's do that. Shall we at the oh, end? Uh, Go ahead, uh, Alexis. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. And, uh, this last poet, his name is Luis Miguel Nava, and uh, he is a very... Um, he took a lot of risks in his poetry and he took a lot of risks in his life. And in fact, he was murdered in bed 25 years ago by his lover, one of his many lovers. And uh, that lover just was released from jail this year uh, in Belgium. So uh, he had a very dramatic and short life. He was an excellent poet, highly esteemed in Portugal and his collected works just came out on the 25th anniversary of his death this year or this past year. Here's a um, couple of poems uh, from the collected book, uh, which has not yet found a publisher, the book of collected poems. Uh, in their skin, the sea, I come to watch its flesh breaking all along the cliffs, which always brings to me the exaltation of those boys that wander Lisbon in the summertime. The sea is in their skin. I share with them my rented room, feeling the waves mounting between the sheets. I am lost within sight of the rock where the sea comes to shed its skin. Na pele, o mar, venho ver-lhe a pele a rebentar ao longo das falésias, o que sempre me traz a exaltação this is rapazes que circulam por Lisboa no verão. O mar está lhes na pele. Partilho com eles os quartos das pensões, sentindo as ondas a avançar entre os lençóis. Perco-me a vista da pedra onde o mar vem largar a pele. And the last poem that I will read is, uh, as someone once said, Como alguém disse. 
Não é que eu seja sábio, como entre as de mármore e alguém disse que é sempre uma coluna de madeira, mas creio já ter visto um livro brilhar como se fosse o mar, quem nele, ao rebentar, depositasse o texto. As someone once said, it's not that I am wise, like someone who once said, amid marble columns, that he himself would always be of wood. But I believe I've seen a book glistening as if it were the sea laying down with pounding surf its text. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Sarah? Thanks for the little bio, Alexis, about, um, about those poets. I did not know that. Uh, and lastly, I'll invite Don to read, to close this out. Don uh, hailing from the Beltway but also uh, who has become the metaphorical dawn of all these Zoom readings, pulling the strings, so to speak, <laughs> allowing us to meet. John, go ahead. Thank you so much. It's a privilege to read in this company. Um, this is more of a lamentation than an elegy. I think of lamentations as for the living. October 30, 2018. Three of 11 killed at the Tree of Life Synagogue were buried. One of the three was husband to my coworker and friend. Unveiling. 11 lives taken at the Tree of Life, hours later and miles away, our writing workshop canceled. Our chance for defiance, however small, gone. I waited at the funeral with hundreds to pass security, newsboys on the street asking with their cameras, who is afraid? I watched her halting walk to his grave, reluctant like a child. I followed like a child with a shovel full of earth to cover him. I listened to the learned, seeking meaning, hundreds crowded into the Beth Shalom basement, police in armor at the entrance. When the door locked behind us, I noticed the dampness and a draft on my bare neck. Today was 11 months, hundreds standing witness in the warmth beneath the trees. I still live, so I was there. I wonder though, would we have canceled the workshop for a drive-by at a playground? Thank you, Don. Um, on that somber note, but really a, a wonderful, wonderful reading. Thank you all. Um, now is the time for a few minutes and then we'll finish up. We have about four minutes. This is when during the church service, you make the announcements, you know, and then, then you have the final prayer. But if you, those of you who, who might recall church services from some point in our collective lives. Um, but anyway, uh, one announcement I'd like to make is to invite you all to consider contributing to the poetry channel, which is the YouTube video channel that I run. And basically the idea is to present compelling poetry on video. We can record via Zoom, or can send record in by other means and send to me by email and then I, with the bio and, and the poem and then post them. Thank you everyone, Sarah. Without you, this would not be possible. Thank you. Uh, and other comments, questions, we can chat for a little bit and then close up. Well, I just want to say that I, I am terribly grateful for being part of a virtual world that on principle, I disapprove of. I think we should be living in a real world together. However, however, there is a huge advantage to this virtual world. And that is that we can be together, whether we're in Buenos Aires or Trinidad or Tobago or Leningrad 
or New York. We can all be together in this virtual family. And that is actually a kind of an advantage. So we cannot smell each other's perfume. We cannot <laughs> touch each other's hand, but we can see each other thousands and thousands of miles away. And uh, I have really enjoyed that. And uh, I remember yesterday I was on a Zoom where a poet read from Bariloche in Argentina. And I thought, ah, oh, Bariloche, it's up in the mountains. It's a ski resort where I was 50 years ago. And I thought, ah, oh, how I wish I were in Bariloche. So I really like the international reverberations and resonances that are available to us because of this um, virtual world that we have been forced to live in. And thanks a lot, Indran, um, uh, for inviting me uh, to join, and, and Sarah, for inviting me to join in with everyone else. Thank you. That was an unpaid uh, public service announcement. <laughs> could, could, could I say something? Go ahead, Indra, please. Indran? Please, go ahead. I, I, I simply want, Alexis, to know that my, my perfume today is Mandarin Blossom. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yesterday. Well, well, would you let us in on the secret of what is mandarin blossom? What are the significance? Oh, of it's mandarin nice. Blossom? It has a, a light, fresh feel, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. And uh, I want to take the opportunity just to, to, to simply say uh, how astonishingly strong I find all of the work that I've heard today, uh, and it, it excites me and incites me. And a great thanks to Indran for being the uh, what the trooper that he is. And thanks to Sarah as well. Thank you to everyone. I look forward to meeting you again. I'll be wearing thanks. a different perfume. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> The um, Man in Blossom sounds like the song Suzanne by Leonard Cohen. The TN <laughs> well, you know, we are, we are reading now for issues uh, uh, party of the, uh, from January onwards. We are, we're going to be starting to work on assembling all the poems from the next issue soon, which will come out hopefully in November. And then... Uh, so if you're sending, considering sending work, it'll be, we'll look at it for uh, issues in 2022 and looking forward to that. And thanks again to everyone. Yeah, Any other thanks. comments? Bye. Bye. Well, I want you to okay. see, okay. I, this is not Jasmine, but this is Eau de Cologne, 4711. <laughs> <laughs> and I recognize as I, that process. <laughs> as I told my international uh, group yesterday at Alta, I had put on 4711 just for them. So. We, 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 we may have to have write a, a whole new spate of poems on perfume, don't you think? Yes, I think so. Perfume, I, I per, need to... per, per, perfume on Zoom. <laughs> well, they have to invent a Zoom that can convey the <laughs> lovely scents. Yes. I think that's on us. We're the poets, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, mandarin, Bye. mandarin blossom is that the name of the perfume, Elizabeth? I yes. have a ta I have my work yes. to do this afternoon. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Much Bye. love to all. Bye -bye. Thanks, Thank you. Don. Thank Thanks you. a lot for pulling it all together. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah.